Welcome everyone to Edge Talk Radio and I am Angela Zabel. I am your host, that's me. And today I am going to be working with Elizabeth Robido, Anita McMillan, and John Baisley. And I am so excited. We're going to be talking about forensic astrology. So let's get into this fun one. So are you ready? I just want to go back through to, we are talking about Edge Talk Radio. And Edge Talk Radio is here for a multitude of reasons to help people connect, to bring people forward, and help everyone move into this new energy and understanding and the knowledge that every that is around us. So check into Edge Talk Radio and Edge Magazine, which is edgemagazine.net. And then for me, I am a psychic, a medium, I am a teacher, coach, and I love to reach people all around the world. And I have been reaching people around the world and it has been so much fun. And I am also on a lot of the different social medias on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I've got a YouTube channel. So, and we're on here with Edge Talk Radio. I also write for Edge Magazine. So you can check out more about me at AngelaZabel.com and you can get to all the other links. And I also, just to let you know, as we go through this program, I do have a team on the other side that works with me. They will sometimes give me different questions, different things they want to bring up, and I will bring that up to the people I'm interviewing. So today, we are also, we are talking with John Baisley, and he is a psychic medium concentrating on psychic detection. He is in Bronx, New York, native who is currently resides in upstate New York in Poughkeepsie. Is it Poughkeepsie? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, Poughkeepsie. Poughkeepsie. Oh, I knew there was a different. There, I know there was a different pronunciation on that. So thank you, John. You're welcome. So, <laughs> he has been in the healthcare field for over 29 years. Presently employed as an IT and consultant specializing in radiology systems. So a very different than what we're working with today, but actually somewhat the same. <laughs> in the past, he's been a graphic designer and attended the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan, a landscaper, a grave digger, love that, and a karate instructor and a trauma center radiologic techno technologist, aka X-ray tech. <laughs> John holds a degree in radiologic technology with numerous certifications in the information technology field. Having discovered his psychic abilities when he experienced a dream visit visitation from his long since past grandmother, John has embarked on a metaphysical journey that led him to a psychic detection where his passion now lies. He has worked with international mediums and psychic detectives, Tony Stockwell, and that's really where I'm the little segue. We have not all of us, but I've met Elizabeth and Anita at Tony Stockwell's uh, sessions. Amazing classes. And if you ever get the chance to work with Tony, little shout out to Tony. He's amazing. <laughs> So he's also worked with Scott Russell Hill on famous cases such as the Beaumont Children, Kevin Hicks, Reese Collins, and in addition to working with law enforcement agencies and detectives, he has played a large role in either having a case reopened or providing avenues of inquiry that led to solving crime. I do want to do a little segue here. This is a lot of what happens. We're not solving crimes, but we're opening information to help detectives, enforcement, or families to look at other options, other things that may have been missed. And that's the big key with this. And John states, it's an honor and a privilege to be the voice of those who have fallen due to extreme circumstances and come to the aid, to the aid of their loved ones and law enforcement. So thank you, John, for being here. That is going to be so much fun to get into. And Anita McMillan, is an intuitive healer, psychic medium, spiritual consultant who offers guidance and divine healing methods such as oracle cards or readings, dream analysis to provide counsel and direction to her clients. She's an experienced holistic healer and soul healer, soul healer who helps mentor her clients on life's past. During readings, she utilizes guidance received from spirit to provide information beneficial for one's financial, spiritual, mental, and physical growth. And I've got to say, John is working on his website, so you'll be able to contact him. But I'm going to be giving Anita and Elizabeth website, so if you ever need to get a, to, in touch with John before he gets there, they'll get you in contact. So give him a call. <laughs> give him a, um, an email. You can check out more about Anita on her website, Anita McMillan, psychicmedium.com. And she offers 
medium sessions. She does mediumship demonstrations. She also helps with classes. She does a lot of different classes that they've been working on. And some, a lot of times her and Elizabeth work on things together. So she does Akashic Records, Past Lives, Meeting Your Guides and Angels, Dream Analysis, Energy and Healing Sessions, Energy and House Clearings, Mentoring, Parties, and Karmic Readings. You can also find out more about her on Instagram and Facebook. She's on Anita McMillan Psychic Medium on Facebook and Anita McMillan Psychic on Instagram. So Elizabeth Robido is a Reiki master teacher. I got that right, Elizabeth, right? You did. Thank you. <laughs> I was working on that when I had a difficult time the last time. <laughs> she is a Reiki master teacher, an intuitive psychic medium, practicing mainly in southern New Hampshire, but delivers messages and readings worldwide. She has been facilitating mediumship de uh, development since 2018. She has mentored and studied under many wonderful mediums, including those who are tutors at the Arthur Finley College. Her goals are to share her knowledge and watch you grow your gifts and to bring peace, greater health, and inner tranquility to her clients. You can check out more on Elizabeth, sign up for a news page and updates on her website. It's elizabethrobido.com and there will be a link down below for the, the uh, how to spell that because it is R-O-B-I-D-O-U-X. So that one is a little bit different. <laughs> um, <laughs> Elizabeth offers mediumship and intuitive sessions, tarot, oracle, angel card readings, house cleansing, group readings, public demonstrations, guest lecturer, forensics, and mentorship programs for the emerging medium, Reiki sessions and classes one, two, and master certification, development practice circles, psychic development circles, full moon circles, and psychic and mediumship development circles. They And I know there's also a two-day workshop on psychic detection and forensic astrology that's going to be coming up in what they are both, what everyone's doing there. And then <clears throat> she also does mediumship demonstrations, events, and sessions at the Heart Song Energy Healing Center in Hookset, New Hampshire, and online events and Zoom, and Zoom sessions. You can find out more about Elizabeth on Facebook at elizabethrobido.9 and on Meetup with the Heart Song Center. So make sure to check into those. And again, the links will be down below. And I just want to say I have had Anita and Elizabeth on Amazing Soul talking about how dual communication works with two mediums at the same time. You can check it out, sign up for their emails and keep up to date. And I just got to say, this has been so much fun. And like I said, I've met Elizabeth and Nita before. I have not met John, but I've heard really good things about him. So I know he's got to be good. <laughs> so today I just want to ask, and maybe we'll start with John. John, how did you get into this? And I want to thank you all for being on here. And how did you start? And you guys can just kind of go around the room. How did you get into forensic astrology? Well, you know, I had been doing... Um, psychic development circles uh, for a long time. Uh, and then I had uh, started off in uh, workshops like Omega uh, with Tony Stockwell doing psychic detection. Uh, came across him quite by accident on Amazon, uh, Prime on his show, uh, Psychic Detective. And he had a number of episodes on there. So wow, I'd really love to do that. Looked him up. There he was at Omega a month later. I signed up. And I think, uh, Liz, you might have been there for that. And maybe, Anita, I'm not too sure, uh, back in like 2018. But then um, having gotten bit by um, the uh, psychic detection uh, bug, I went on and uh, was looking up different things, looking at the word forensic, and up popped astrology next to it and I guess from a former search Google puts them together and I said what's that forensic astrology looked it up uh, there was only um, one or two sites uh, a couple of articles a few books not much information but looked it up uh, had gotten the material absorbed it and I said wow you know this can be a great tool something in our arsenal besides uh, what we're getting and psychic detection, you know, that encompasses all of uh, the gifts or disciplines uh, within uh, the psychic realm. Uh, you can use L rods, you can use 
pendulums, mediumship, just the psychic, and so on. And now here comes along this, and it's a great tool for validating uh, the information, not only the facts in the case, but also what you're getting uh, through mediumship, psychic, and so on. I love that. And I love how you talked about how once you start down this road, how things happen, the, the synchronicity, and that's really how I think a lot of, and then I've been to that psychic detective with Tony Stockwell. It's very interesting. Oh, too. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really interesting how you look at the synchronicity that led you to, you know, things popped up just at the right time to get you where you need to go and really trusting in yourself. And I know that's something you had talked about or had given me information on how you wanted to let people know we're all connected. And that's one of the things I, I just want to quickly ask is do you think anybody can do this and what because I know a lot of people like why well, I, I don't know how to do this I don't know how to do this there's no way I can do that what's your take on understanding what people can connect to can they use this can anybody do it anybody can do it if I can do it anybody can do it I, I am not a traditional astrologer I know a lot of the astrologers are going to be falling off their chairs now, but uh, I didn't. I didn't study that. I came from the other end. I came straight into forensic astrology, and it made uh, sense to me. But uh, I think anyone can do it, and that's what uh, Liz and I are doing with this class. Is just making it more accessible, easily digestible, and it really is. It really is a lot of uh, a lot of fun. What's nice is you know we also have. Anita, who's a traditional astrologer, but there's a lot of crossover, right, Anita? And um, what's what's funny is I was working on a case, um, and it was Kevin Hicks case, and I thought that there was a priest involved, but you know, I, I I'm not a traditional astrologer. Liz had printed out the chart, had it on her table. Anita walks through the door, looks down, and says, "Oh, a priest." And right there, you know, there's the crossover and, and the validation as well. I love that. That, that frankly, like Elizabeth, how did you kind of get into the segue with John? And then we'll go into Anita, how this, how this kind of culmination of synchronistic people got together. <laughs> right. Um, so John and I were in a class with uh, Tony Stockwell, psychic detection and, um, John had been kind of working and learning about this in the background and Tony had John do like a guest spot during our class and actually work, um, showed us the Kevin Hicks case. And there's just something about it. My analytical brain likes it because there's so, things that are so definite about it. This means this, this means this, you know, it's finite, which I like. Um, and I was so intrigued that I reached out to John. I'm like, I want to learn more. Teach me this. So it's kind of how we, you know, psyched into all of it. All right. She touched on, on a certain thing that's, that's important. You know, uh, I'm, I was an x-ray tech, so that's a melding of science and art. Uh, you know, you have the science of the EM spectrum and the x-rays and so on like that, but then there's taking pictures, you know, and uh, that's the art part. Same thing uh, with astrology part science, the uh, astronomy, the planets, the movement, so on. And then you have the art of reading it, you know, and, and you know, how I see a chart is different than how uh, Liz or Anita sees a chart, even if we see the same thing. I love that. And I just want to do a little segue on that. And then we're going to go into Anita because I feel everyone here has their own unique gifts, their own unique talents, and their own unique way of connecting to the other side. So each of us are going to glean different information that's going to kind of put everything together. So when people say, well, this person does it, so why should I do it? It's like, because everyone's so different and you're going to connect and get different information than someone else. Just like, you know, like all of you, like John, you worked on it, Elizabeth, you had the, the chart there and then Anita walks in and says, oh, because I know this, this came in. So that's something for everyone out there to think about. Everyone's unique, your own unique gifts are worth it to the world, are worth it bringing it out and worth it to kind of keep examining and go, what else can I learn? Because this really is, learning is so much fun. <laughs> and that's how I'm here. <laughs> 
So Anita, when you walked in and you do a lot, you do the, the, the mediumship, but you also dabble a lot more into the astrology side. So what brought you into that uh, astrology side? Yeah, um, you know, of course, as a kid, I always was intrigued in reading your horoscope because you get the Sunday paper and you would read what your week was going to be like. And I always thought that I wanted to help to find missing people, particularly children. So I think somehow I got involved with that aspect of it, but I started out with the astrology and now it's kind of come full circle when I met John and Liz through this. And I'm like, okay, so that's where I really started. So I find it just, fa it's just all fascinating to me. And I think that's something too, that, you know, we, we're all here learning and understanding and, and seeing who we are and, and to be excited about it. And I know all three of you were excited, you know, when we first talked about doing this show and it's like, oh, that's going to be so much fun. Mm -hmm. And, and that's to have the excitement on everything you learn. If it's not exciting, start looking at some other aspect that may be exciting to you because a lot of times things bring you to where you need to be and then you go off on I call them sometimes the other tangent which is also so much fun <laughs> so when you started working on all of this is how did you come up with kind of or how did you like you had just talked about something Elizabeth and Anita and John about talking about I saw that one part in the chart and said oh that's a priest so can you kind of talk a little bit about the background of how does forensic astrology and what is forensic astrology as far as with the charts and how that works? Sure. Well, I think that a lot of the viewers are used to seeing a birth or natal chart, and that's very similar to uh, what we use. We use the same software or something like that, uh, where in the birth chart, you put your birth date, you put the time of your birth, you put the location with uh, a crime chart, which we call an event chart. Mm -hmm. You're putting in, again, the same thing, the date a, a crime occurred or an event, uh, you're putting in the location and then a timestamp. What's a timestamp? Well, it's CCTV. It's the last time a witness uh, saw someone that went missing. It is uh, when a police report is issued or missing persons report is issued, when Amber Alert goes out, 911 call, last text message or cell phone call, and you input that in, up comes the chart, and then you get uh, what happened at the very moment that a crime took place, when someone disappeared, when someone was murdered, and it's all right there, a 360 degree view. And then it's up to the person to kind of flesh it out. That's really interesting. And I think a lot of people look at like the birth chart, you just have your, your basic information, but to look back and say, oh, if someone's you know missing or something happened, you don't know where they are, to also use that chart Astro, and like, like you said, the astrological chart to bring it out to where people can see, oh, there's another chart. Because I think a lot of us here and other people, they use the, um, where you extend out your chart to see what's coming up and see what may be coming up. But we don't think about what happens at the end of the chart in this life. <laughs> right. So that's something... What, I just want to kind of go back a little bit and for Elizabeth and Anita, like why, what part of it, Anita, when you looked at that chart, did it say that's priest? What, can you like yeah. give us a little example of that or, yeah. or other parts? In, in the wheel of, of the astrology chart, there are 10 different houses or actually 12 different houses and each one means something different. There's also planets that are in those houses and astrological signs. So sometimes the combination of them can give us that information. And also too, we utilize, um, there are degrees that we have an assigned. So the number 22, like a 22 degrees is very specific for a forensic astrologer because it's the sign that means to kill or to be killed. 
So that gives us quite a bit of information. Um, as far as the priest goes, it can be um, sometimes if it's in the 10th house, it's the house of authority, it's the house of religion, or the ninth house actually could be the house of religion. So that with all the other the pieces kind of gives us that information. I love that. It, you know, for me, it's really fascinating to see all the information. And like Elizabeth, when you're working on this, what are the things that like you get drawn into first? What are like your first things like you want to check into when you're doing a chart? Um, well, generally, the first thing I do is I check in psychically first. So get the details of whatever it is, check in psychically, see what I'm getting for information. Then I put that aside and then I start with the chart. So, um, and I'm, I'm very, I can be very methodical. So I'll start, you know, and, and we'll go through, we'll go through a case for you. So you can see kind of how we do it, which um, the viewers might really, you know, because in doing it is how you, you know, you understand it more, but I'm really methodical. Look at, look what's happening with the victim, who might the perpetrators be, you know, so I, I, look that way, look in the different houses to see what's going on there. And then the combinations of uh, signs and planets and degrees and what those all mean. And as you go through each house and put that, get that information, you're able to tell the story of what happened. I know one of the things I love about there, you know, so many of you are the scientific and the methodical. And, and a lot of times people think like, oh, I have to be in this like airy fairy land to be able to do any of this stuff. And it's like, actually, a lot of the, a lot of the things we learn in our life through our life to get where we are right now, help us so much in, in, you know, calling back on all that information, all that knowledge. And, you know, it, I think it's always fascinating to hear about people's backgrounds to see, it's like, oh, I can see where that's coming in to help them where they're at now. So, it, and also to have fun looking back at all the things that came into play to get you there. And I love the methodical part because I've got so many people and um, I know John, you're Scorpio, my husband is too, very uh, deep and got to have that stuff right up front. <laughs> Analyzing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Always analyzing, quiet in the background. Always looking, though, right? Always looking. Anyway, yeah. they got to have the facts in front of them. <laughs> but, you know, Liz brings up a good point. And to what you're also saying, you know, you have to have um, that methodology. You know, you have to have a system. You know, you go in, you see the chart, you validate the chart, look at the degree that it's, that it's at, and is, is this a good chart? And then you go from there. You look at what the sign and the ruling planet is of the victim, then the sign and ruling planet is of the perpetrator, and then you go to Pluto, which is the point of trouble in the chart, can give you a lot of information about what's going on, and you go on down from there. But also the art, like Liz said, um, you psychometrize the chart, you feel into it. I think that's where you know psychics uh, really have an edge, although I think a lot of astrologers end up being intuitive after doing it for so long. They just get that feeling like police officers with hunches. It's the same thing. And then you have, you know, uh, the signs and the planets and the houses and, as Anita said, the degree and the combinations of them. That's where it really comes uh, all together. I like how you hit on that, how a lot of people are so intuitive and they're, they're using that gut instinct. And yeah. that's really the connection to everything. It's just what you call it, whatever makes you comfortable calling it, it doesn't matter, but it's all that connection. And I think a lot of times when we, you know, you had talked about like psychics and that, and I think it's just my opinion here. I think a lot of it is just that you're trusting yourself those gut instincts and those hunches, hunches, you're trusting yourself more, which because I think everybody's kind of psychic and intuitive. You just got to step into it and trust yourself that you are and don't think you're totally crazy. <laughs> right, exactly. Not only that, but you have to have uh, the courage to bring out into the open, you know, what you're feeling, no matter how crazy it is. I mean, something may not make sense to you, but put it out there. It may make sense to somebody else, the family or the loved ones or the police, what have you. And I think you brought up a really good point, the courage, because a lot of us have those instincts, those hunches, but we don't say anything because we're afraid of what other people may say about it. So 
a very, very good point. And I think that's something that's changing more now where the fear is starting to let go of it. The, the understanding that this is who we are is so important. So I am so excited to see what you guys are doing. And for those of you, we're going to on the radio, but it'll also be uploaded to YouTube. So we're going to let them share screens. I'd love for you to kind of go through some of the examples and, and show us and talk to us along the way for those that are on the radio. I mean, how I, how I get into these cases is usually Elizabeth will contact me and say, hey, I've got another case. It's New Hampshire, you know, and it's just been case after case after case. I'm like, what the hell is going on in New Hampshire? You know, but, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's interesting. But yes, uh, Elizabeth, why don't you take us through uh, one of the cases we did in the past and I can bring up a chart when you're ready. Okay. All right. So um, today we're gonna, going to go through the Elijah Lewis case. Um, the backstory on this is this is a five-year-old boy who is missing in Merrimack, New Hampshire. Um, he was reported missing on October 14th and 21, last seen six months prior. Um, so this was an interesting chart to work, um, trying to find the exact date, like the, you know, John had spoken of, you know, the event time date, all of that. It was, it was hard to pinpoint it. We actually worked three or four different charts. Mm -hmm. Um, the public was asked to assist um, in looking for this child on October 14th. Um, his mom, uh, Daphne DeFinius, was 34 at the time with her boyfriend, Joseph Staff. Um, they were known to be in a, um, they kind of went missing too for a day or two. They were known to be in a red Toyota pickup truck. Um, they searched the lake. Um, you know, kind of the timeline of this on October 17th, they searched the lake where this, um, beside the house where this little boy lived or was staying. Um, and on the 18th, DeFinius and staff were arrested in New York. Um, they had asked others to lie about the location of this child um, in the, those six months um, because they knew Child Protective Services were looking for him. Um, because they were trying to do the well checks and they kept saying, oh, he's with his dad, like, you know, or he's over here, he's over there. They, they lied, had other people covering for them. Um, on October 20th, the police conducted a search in Abington, Massachusetts. And um, on the 23rd, they found his remains near a state park. Um, the medical examiner confirmed the next day that it was Elijah and um, the autopsy in the investigation by the ME uh, confirmed that he had died from um, violence, neglect, negligence. This child was malnourished. Um, he had been held in restraints. And um, the final cause of death was um, from head trauma. Um, he died somewhere between September 21st and September 24th. And interestingly, one of the dates that we use, not knowing that, um, because the information from the autopsy came out later, we use the 21st as our uh, chart date. So um, his his mom and this her boyfriend drove him to uh, this state park and they buried him in a shallow grave. So as we go through the chart, um, and Anita's going to talk a lot about you know, going through it. Um, as we go through it, we're going to see all of those different elements and how they show up in the chart with the various combinations between, you know, the degrees that um, where planets are positioned in the chart, what rules different planets. So it will all come into place. So um, John, if you want to bring that up, that would be awesome. Sure. And I love the fact you guys are bringing this well with a regular case so people can actually follow along, see how mm -hmm. it works. So right. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So um, just to point out, when the first thing we ever do, if you look over um, where it says ASC, and for those um, who, who are just listening to us, when you look at an astrological chart, you're looking for the ascendant, um, and that is on the uh, right in the middle of the chart on the left-hand side. Uh, that is in Scorpio at 15 degrees. 15 degrees is a good number. We always want to make sure the chart's valid. Um, because you want to make sure your information is accurate. You can do that by um, knowing if it's like, um, John can chime in on this one, but generally for me, if it's anywhere between five and 26, I'm like, okay, it's good. I don't question it. 
If it's outside of those numbers, then I look for information in the chart to validate what is known publicly because it doesn't always have to be in that range. But interestingly enough, 15 degrees, one of the meanings behind that is um, murder. Oh, wow. Yeah, so um, yeah. So Anita, do you wanna, um, I'm gonna yeah, let you I, explain that. Sure, I can start with, if you look at what we call the ascendant, which is what Liz just pointed out, if you were to look at a clock, it's actually kind of at the nine o'clock time. And that is in the sign of Scorpio, but it is also um, Scorpio's ruling planet is Pluto and Pluto is very symbolic of death. So we know this event is going to result in a death of someone. And um, because Pluto is in the third house, if you look at the wheel, there's a number three and it's kind of almost at the uh, six o'clock time and that John's circling there for us. Thanks, John. And Pluto uh, speaks about a car it speaks about traveling because it's in the third house. So we know that the sadly the child is killed, but we know he's moved from one point to the next point. And that's the first thing we start with. And then the next piece we start with or go to actually is the descendant, which is at, John, if you can kind of point that out over there, the descendant is what we call the suspect or the perpetrator. And in this chart, the suspect or the descendant is in the astrological sign of Gemini. Now, Gemini, is, most people know that that's the symbol of two different things or two different signs. So we know that this is two people. So the perpetrator or the suspects are, in fact, two people. And then, Liz, do you want to go from there? Sure. So, um in looking at that, at that too, um, we know um, Gemini is um, ruled by Mercury. Sometimes we look at, so what's Mercury ruled by? Um, and Anita had pointed this out, and that was Libra. Libra can indicate um, people who are in a relationship. So we've got the two people in the seventh house as the perpetrators who are shown to be in a relationship. Um, Mercury um, is squaring the moon. The moon in every chart is the co-ruler. The co-ruler um, moon in this chart is in the eighth house. Uh, eighth house is generally the house of death. Um, and it can also show an emotionally impulsive or irrational person. Um, at five degrees, um, the moon is shown there at five degrees. Um, that can indicate children. So we know that the moon was doing something influencing children, in this case, Elijah. Mm -hmm. um, cancer speaks to family. So the sign of cancer talks about family. Um, cancer rules the moon. Um, so, and it's actually because the moon is in cancer in this chart there, um, there's more of an emphasis on that. Um, and then, I'm just, you know, going from there, you know, you just kind of work your way, you know, around the chart from there, looking at some of the things like what connects to, you know, what, what connects, what does the moon connect to? What does, um, you know, what, what do your different planets connect to? One thing, when we're looking for a missing person, we always want to know, well, where are they? Um, where there's so much death showing up in this chart, you would look to Saturn because Saturn will tell you the location of the body. So where's where's the body? Where are the bones? So we're down in the third house again um, in Aquarius. Aquarius indicates movement. Um, you also have, um, you know, the nine degrees would show that it traveled. Um, Saturn, the body is with Pluto which is the point of trouble in the chart and um, Jupiter, which makes everything just way more expansive. John, chime in on any time or Anita on this. I just want to also point out, uh, somebody may see that, that this is eight degrees, but Saturn is in retrograde. So we always add a degree on, on there. So it could be eight degrees, could be nine degrees, whatever best fits in the chart. And she's absolutely right with the nine degrees, you know, you have a long travel and there's, a relationship between these two. You have short travels, vehicles, you have long travels, garages, uh, carports, things of that nature. I just want to point out that there's always relationships between the, the chart, uh, uh, the house across from another house. Mm -hmm. 
I love the fact that you guys are taking us through all of this uh, one step at a time. I love it. And it's so much information. And I think the listeners are going to be very fascinated with everything you're doing today. So continue. I'm just fascinated watching, listening. Okay. <laughs> look look how much information we've gotten already just from a few things. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And a few simple steps, not something exactly. like crazy, you know, where you've got to go, you know, for like years and years and years. This is pretty mm-hmm basic astrology if for people when they start learning and the more you learn the more you're going to pick up on and understand so mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah um I, I also wanted to point out one thing um because i like and needed to talk about the fourth house but um 15 degrees also can represent um you know as you're doing this there's there's kind of set um parameters and in, in words that are associated with each degree and um, as you look through them, you kind of psychically pick out what they, you know, you can use your psychic intuition or your gut to pick out which words in those series of words kind of feel right for the chart. Um, 15 degrees can also be someone restrained. It can show restraint. Mm-hmm. So it's one of the words in there. And that was one of the words that kind of we plucked, you know, kind of plucked that out when we were working the chart and that was verified later. Um, but Anita, I think what, um, yeah, if we look at the four around yeah. Yeah, if we look at the fourth house, we have um, Neptune there at 20 degrees, and it's in the sign of Pisces. Neptune in Pisces speaks about um, illusion, delusion, drugs, things that are foggy. We do know from the backstory that this boy was drugged. And the 22 degrees, like I said in the beginning, is to be killed. So we do believe, we believe that the child was killed from the drugs that, that he was given. But then if you go to the next house, which is the fifth house, we look at Chiron and Chiron tells us about the injuries that were involved. It's in the astrological sign of Aries and Aries rules the head so that we also know that there is head trauma to this child. And we we learned later after the autopsies that there was blunt force trauma to the head. But also the head is where our fuzziness would happen with the drugs that are involved there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And also 12 degrees um, of Chiron, the 12 degrees is also symbolic of drugs. So we know that there are there are drugs that are involved probably within the with the mother and her boyfriend as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just want to jump in and add. So like we we can gather all this information, but at the end of the day, the question is, where is he? Right. You know, where is he? Um, There is, when you look in the sixth house, um, right, um, in this this particular chart, you have uh, Uranus in Taurus. um, And there is, there's a blue line that goes from um, Taurus up to the sun. So from Uranus to the sun, the sun can indicate an authority figure. And it's in the 10th house. Um, 10th house can mean open wooded areas. The sun can be either, um, generally it's authority figures. Um, It is in, I'm horrible with my signs. I still have to look them up. Is that Virgo? That is Virgo, yes. Okay, so Virgo can mean a woman. 10th house is also, um, not only is it open and wooded, but it's in the public eye. So in this investigation, we had um, the lead detective was a lady. So we've got, you know, we have the sun in Virgo. So we have our authority figure who's a lady in the public asking for assistance. And it's kind of aspect or joined to um, to Taurus and Uranus. That can mean, um, that can indicate um, dogs. Um, or it can also mean that um, canines would be influential in the search. So we're going to use canines to look for the, or you're going to assume that canines will be used to help search for this child. This child was found in an open area um, and found by the canines. So that was all supported in that chart. So there are like little details you can pick out along the way that um, can be validated later, or it might be, you know, if you did a chart like this and you're working with the police, you can say, look, we can see that it's going to be very important for you to work with canines on this one. This is how you're going to find them. You need to be looking in these types of areas. Yes, uh, nine degrees is to search. That's big bold letters uh, right there. And you can see that you know, when you 
uh, go to the chart right in there and nine degrees. It's, it's giving you information as you go around the, uh, the chart as Anita said, 12 degrees, 22 degrees, eight or nine degrees, nine degrees, you know, and some of them really kind of add up. You know, if you have uh, one, two, three, four uh, degrees, that can tell you a sign as well. You know, this uh, head blow, abuse and so on uh, like that. And uh, 15 degrees, you know, is also the degree of crisis and so on. It's also uh, a very intense degree. Each house has 30 degrees. So as you go up in degrees to 15, so does the energy. It, it, it builds up to 15. That's the most intense. And then it starts going back down as you head down to 30 degrees, 15 degrees intense chart. Oh, that's pretty, I, I'm kind of amazed, like the degrees, how how important some of those, the degrees are in the chart, in reading the chart and understanding the chart. So I'm very, <laughs> very intrigued with everything you've been showing us so far. Is there something else you'd like to go through with on the chart itself? Uh, sure. Um, I mean, just uh, Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, maybe not in particular this one, but there's other things that you can bring in. So um, maybe... If you want to wrap us up on this chart, John, then maybe show us how asteroids can be helpful. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, like I said, you know, you can look at, well, what kind of car was there? You know, Mars, metal, car, and it's going hard down, hard line aspecting down to uh, Neptune. Well, Neptune is water, right? Could mean blue, a blue car. So, uh, you know, maybe uh, fourth house, maybe uh, family type vehicle, or maybe it's the fact that this blue car was the end of the matter. Fourth house is kind of like a, a pseudo death house. And then lastly, uh, we have uh, Uranus in Taurus. You know, this is one of the, uh, um, the bad actors in a, uh, in a crime chart, among other things. Um, Uranus, uh, loud, fast, so on like that. So this could be a loud scream, maybe the child scream. Or this could be a fast suffocation because Taurus governs the throat. So fast uh, suffocation could also mean fast food. Taurus governs food. So sometimes you say to the police, hey, listen, fast food, you know, it, these people, when they commit crimes, they just like to eat. And, you know, you tell the police, go to the surrounding fast food joints, look at the security footage and, you know, maybe look for a blue car, you know, blue family car and so on like that. That's so interesting. I never would have thought of that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so let's bring up another chart um, that I have uh, here. Um, bum, bum, bum. Where is it? Da, 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 da. We'll be editing this, right? <laughs> No, I don't no. add it. <laughs> do you want do you want me to give a little bit of the background on this one? Uh, this is the Pamela Smart case, correct? Yeah, it is. Okay, why don't you give the background to it? Then I'll bring up the chart, which I have up right now. Awesome. And, uh, so short synopsis, um, a lot of people would be familiar with the Gregory Smart murder case. Um, his wife was, um, she's still in jail um, for this. Uh, it happened in New Hampshire. Once again, and um, but this this case was unique. This was one of the first cases that uh, it was tried in the public eye. So uh, the court the court proceedings were actually um, live streamed, and people all over the country watched it. It kind of this particular case kind of changed the way um, people view legal proceedings and how we access them. Um, in this particular case, um, there were. Um, Three, I think there were three gentlemen who were um, incarcerated. Um, they uh, killed Gregory Smart, at, um, basically um, at her behest, is what kind of came out in the in the investigation. She was instrumental in it happening. She asked them to do it. So in this case, um, we kind of looked at it, and you can also use asteroids. John is like a Bound of information. Every time I work with him, there's always something new he's like teaching, showing, and I'm like, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> so 
<laughs> so asteroids are like a new area that, you know, I'm learning about. So John, if you want to show, like it actually shows, wait till you see this. I'm just going to let him explain it. <laughs> I love asteroids, by the way. I've done different oh. asteroids in in people's charts. I dabble in it a little bit too. And I love putting the asteroids in to see the extra energy that comes up with asteroids. <laughs> so you know. Perfect. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm just uh beginning to learn about asteroids myself, but you know, you go to uh fixed stars and asteroids. Uh, when you don't have that much information or if you want to confirm some things, but we did a little experiment and I brought up um, a chart. This is a little bit of a different chart, different software, but I think it's better for, uh, for asteroids um, in here. So uh, here we have, and we have Pamela's name. This is an asteroid, Pamela. And what's it next to, you know? It's next to a, a, a lot of uh, the problems uh, within uh, in the chart, especially the eighth house, right? This is one of the unfortunate departments, uh, one of the death houses. So that gives us a clue right there. You know, Pamela's involved with this. Also, uh, we have um, down here uh, in, the, in the sixth house, we have William uh, down in here. And he's down in here in Aries, uh, which gives us a lot of things. You know, the signs, uh, when, you, when you look at them in a chart, it's much the way when you're in church and you look at stained glass, the sun is shining through and the light comes through all the different colors of the stained glass and each color has a certain energy. So each sign brings a certain energy and description to that chart. So right now, Aries is telling us uh, aggression, uh, anger, you know, to this person, uh, William, in the chart. And then you also have another uh, asteroid here, de-arrest. And de-arrest means to stop or arrest. But we take it a step further in uh, forensic astrology, and that could mean uh, an arrest time, and um, we can, uh, each each house has a certain speed to it. So uh, the fourth house um, is, a, is a house that's on, uh, the, the cusp acts very uh, quickly. Uh, and then you have the succeeding house here, um, not too uh, far away, not too, not too far off, I would say. And then you have a Caden house, things move very slowly. So if the arrest were in a Caden house, we might not see an a, a arrest for years and years, maybe never. Gives you clues and so on. That's very interesting to see the, the difference in how those houses move and with the asteroids in there. Very cool. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, there is one other one uh, in here. Uh, we brought up Toro. Uh, Toro means to ambush. And uh, Liz, uh, you can probably speak to that better than I could uh, on there. But William and Toro, William ambushing, that gives us a huge clue. Mm -hmm. and, and from what we know of the, um, the case, um, William Flynn was the trigger man um, who, who shot uh, Greg Smart. And he, um, when Greg came into his his condo that night, he was ambushed by William and another another boy, um, and so I mean it's it's just right there in the chart. I love the fact you know for me just <clears throat> I know some of this stuff I I'm not to the extent a lot of you are <laughs> of course, but I like to say I dabble in it. But when you look at Toro, you look at to me it reminds me of like. Taurus, like the bull who uh -huh. is always, you got to watch your back because they'll come at you and you won't see it coming with that ambush aspect. So I think it's so fascinating how we can right. really bring everything in. And mess with the bull and you get the horns, right? Very descriptive. I love that. So very cool. And I think, you know, as we're going through this for people to see how these connections are making and to hear it, because, you know, everything we do is really about resonance. And for the people that are listening, your resonance with this, run with what piques your interest because 
like I said earlier, everyone's different and unique. You're going to pick up different things in the chart. And that's one thing like with Anito, the different parts that you pick up in the chart are going to be different than Elizabeth and John. And what are things for you that you really look at? Like Elizabeth had said, where you use your intuition. And I think that's key for everyone too. <laughs> but then where do you go from there, Anita? Oh, well, I think for me, I, I actually use, I call it John methodology. <laughs> <laughs> His News to me. And then I, I get the pieces down because I am much like Liz, I have to have everything kind of lined up. And then once I look at all the pieces, then I try to put the storyline together. And it still amazes me to this day how it does flow out. I mean, one of our lines in spirituality is you can't make this blank up, right? <laughs> so when you see it in the chart and it really brings it back to life, it still shocks me. So that's kind of how I Flow, let it flow. And just to show you how we work together, I, I, uh, Liz and I were working on some case, I can't remember, and we were working for hours on one chart. I mean, I wouldn't let it go, you know, and I'm saying, I, I can't get the information, you know, and then a day or two later, she says, hey, you know, I progressed the chart, you know, a few hours, you know, you want to take a look at it? And all of a sudden, there was, you know, the whole story took place. I mean, you can see the plan, boom, 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 uh, boom. I probably wouldn't have done that. You know, I was kind of hard in on, on that time, but yes, you can progress a chart. So I learned something uh, from that. And then Anita, uh, most recently, uh, when we were working on a chart, um, there was a grand trine. You know, it's like a triangle and the planets all kind of uh, blend energy. And to me, it's very um, disharmonious and uh, I was, talking to Anita about it and she's like no I see it working in harmony right Anita you saw it as you know they it made it easier for for things to happen and I was like oh that's a that's a new take yeah yeah when there's a trine whether it's any kind of trine it just is a nice connection that flows easily although in murder it's hard to put it that way but it did make it easy for it to flow yeah I love how you just talked about, you know, a lot of times our human minds or what we've been taught right. tells us, you know, this should be difficult or this shouldn't go. Mm -hmm. But seeing and looking at like murder, like different things, how things can go together, how they can flow to make things, the things that happened, happened at the time they did and, and how it all goes together. And I think that's something. So when you're working with trines, what maybe you should maybe let people know what the trine is and, and how that works together a little bit more. Yeah, well, in traditional astrology, and I also think as well as in forensic, it is kind of an overlap. A trine means simply that one thing flows nicely together with another. So as it happens, it, it, it expands it and makes it um, join up together. It's like three people in a trine who are working together and one piece I don't get, John will get, one piece John gets, Liz will pick up on it. And together we all as a triangle or the trine flow easily together to tell the storyline. And I, that's something I think is so key is all of you work together and you work together on a lot of these different cases and, and just expanding and understanding your knowledge. All of us going forward, working more more people working together is what's really going to make a difference in everything going forward in in our world and, and everything we experience and the connections and communication between all of us so i think it's awesome and i i've just been so i felt so lucky to be part of the connections i've made with all of you here and i think all of you reaching more people is going to be another great connection for everything out there I love it. <laughs> so is the, I'd like, is there anything people can do? I mean, I know you have a, I think it's a two day workshop on forensic astrology coming up. Um, is there anything people need to know is like, like, say they're going to do a class like this, what's required? Do you have to have a certain background? And also, are you guys planning on doing this class possibly over zoom or letting people join over zoom? Well, um, I think that, you know, Elizabeth and I uh, talked about it and, you know, it was funny because we were like, yeah, let's, let's do like maybe a workshop online. And then I went to like, let's just do a one day 
workshop. And then I said, you know what? I don't think we can cover it all in one day. Let's do maybe psychic detection on Saturday and then forensic astrology on Sunday. And then I came back again. I was like, I don't think we can cover everything. I like, have a beginner's weekend and then an advanced, you know, uh, course, you know, so that's kind of where it's uh, been involved uh, or where it evolved. Um, I have been asked to do uh, Zoom uh, courses as well. And, you know, it's heading in that direction. You know, it's the only way really to, you know, uh, reach the masses. Uh, I, I, I think it's going to be uh, heading there. And it's, it's a recording that, that people can see and, and say, oh, this is how it works. Here's the beginning. Here's how you bring up a chart. Um, here's the first couple of things I can I can look at, you know, and uh, I think that the, the people coming there, um, most of them already have some sort of psychic or mediumship background, uh, especially uh, Liz, you have uh, quite a few students that have been asking uh, uh, mm -hmm. about it and so on like that. It's nice to have a little bit of knowledge, uh, not always necessary. It's, you know, I think just having an interest in it uh, alone, you know, uh, would be enough but it, it does make it easier if you have some sort of background and it's some sort of knowledge you know uh, in there awesome i love that and that's i can't wait for people to really check into more of your information all of your information up here and how you're bringing people together and i love the fact too that you know you maybe start out with psychic and, and mediumship and how you're moving into astrology and moving into all the other different aspects. It is really about a continuing learning life. This, this really is. And it's so much more fun when you do that. <laughs> so I just want to go through, is there anything else you would like to bring up about the forensic astrology or anything either of you have going on coming up shortly? Um, well, I think that, um, well, we had the, the weekend, the two weekends, um, was, uh, one in, um, March and one in, um, April, correct? Um, April. And then, yeah. yeah. Oh right. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, you know, I'm so scrambled with the, uh, with the date. <laughs> and then, um, uh, we also had this Tony Stockwell is doing a, uh, short six month mentorship uh, the missing where we'll be working on um, cases and uh, actual cases bringing in family members loved ones witnesses and also uh, police officers as well and I'm quite sure forensic astrology uh, uh, will be coming up there he's a big fan of it um, he loves it and uh I just heard there's a, a the case out in England, Bully, you might have heard about it, uh, where a woman was uh, abducted in a park and the dog was left there that she was um, walking on. Police uh, said, oh, you know, she slipped in and drowned. And then uh, the friends of people said, no, she didn't slip in and drown, you know, but you messed up the crime scene. Here, here it is. But I, I did some uh, forensic astrology on it, you know, and, and then somebody said, can you put together a quick report? And then would you mind if I give it to this person? And then all of a sudden it's, it's heading toward Tony. And they said, Tony, would you mind if we brought this up in class? And, you know, uh, Tony, you know, hearing that there was some psychic astrology information and he was like, hell yeah. You know, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing I love if, for those of you who haven't worked with Tony, I, I highly <laughs> recommend check him out. And if you get a chance to work with him in person, it is so worth it. He is, he's so funny, so much fun, and so very down to earth. And yeah. like I said, if you're looking for some, I know it's like, we're promoting Tony today, and that's good. <laughs> yeah, well, he, you know, he's yeah. the kindest, most loving man that I know, you know, mm -hmm. period. He yeah, is. A great and he's so, he's so humble. And yeah. all he cares about at the end of the day is um, helping, healing, and making sure that you know, whatever he does is just with the utmost ethics and respect for with whoever he's dealing with. He's just, he's, he's an amazing human. He really yeah. is. Yeah. Funny, funny story. Uh, Liz and I were at a workshop at uh, the Omega Institute with Tony and for psychic detection. And he didn't talk to me about it, but in the middle of it, he says, John Baisley, please present your astrology and Liz could tell you the look on my face because I didn't know, you know, this was going to happen, you know, 
but uh, had to give up. But he wanted to bring it out to the class and show them, okay, here's this new tool. And we switched places. Well, he sat in my seat in the audience, <laughs> but I think he likes being a student because I don't think he gets that opportunity anymore. And he did that with our uh, psychic detection mentorship. You know, I, I introduced it to him and he says, you know, John, he says, this is the first time during a one-on-one, -on -one I actually feel like a student. And uh, so interesting, but you know, he's promoting it too. And, and it was very gracious of him to do that and uh, to give forensic astrology the opportunity to be shown. Yeah. You know, that's that's the one thing with with uh, with Tony is he's willing to sit back, to be the student, to let people, to see when people are finding something new, something different, and mm -hmm. for him to learn and to let it be brought out to the other people. And I think this is like the tip of the iceberg with the forensic astrology, just kind of showing people what else is possible, what else is possible to know, to understand, and to never quit following those little hunches and those those things because you know all of you had said you use your intuitiveness you walk in and and it goes by what you've learned I will say like that toolbox everything you have in inside you and it's bringing that out and using it and that's one thing I think is so cool and that's um I originally so all this actually started with contacting Anita to get together to do a show. And then we did Anita, Elizabeth, and John. And so it's all been this continuation and I can't see where the story goes from here. <laughs> Part two. <laughs> yeah, can I, can I add one thing about forensic astrology? What I think is so appealing about it is it is, it is nice to have that background in, in you know, psychic development, but it's readily accessible to everybody because it is so finite. Like, you know, certain things mean certain things, you know, this always means this, there's no wiggle room there that it, it is readily accessible to people who don't have, who haven't like all of us have, have not studied for years and years in this field of, you know, spirituality and psychic development and mediumship, you know, someone who has a strong intuition or a willingness or the need to help can come in and use this because as you said, Angela, it's a tool in the toolbox. So you use this tool to get the end result to help somebody. And it just, all it really takes is, you know, willingness to put in the time because this is not a, uh, we went through that chart very quickly. Um, that was hours of work. Mm -hmm. um, this is not something that you can just jump in and do in five or 10 minutes. John can now, but <laughs> you can't <laughs> jump in and do, do like that in, you know, five or 10 minutes. Sometimes this is hours and hours of work and you do have to be dedicated to it. But, you know, once again, it's accessible. It's, it's all, all it takes is a willingness to, to learn. It really takes a passion almost, and you know, you've got passionate people. Everyone's passionate on you know this uh, uh, show right now, and um, you know she was right. This first round is about like four hours, uh, and I'm the type of person that, that will just go through the whole four hours, not you know um, taking a sip of water, not eating, not doing anything, and but you got to take a break, you got to step away, and then when I come back, you know. Uh, psychic work is draining, right? Uh, it's, it's energy draining. And I may not come back to it uh, that day. You know, I may look at the chart and say, no, not today. Tomorrow, no, not tomorrow. Next day, no, I'm just not feeling up to it. But then a couple of days, few days later, I say, oh, you know, all right, let me look at it. And a few more things come through about an hour later, you know, and then that's about it. And then it slowly kind of comes together like that. But hard work, yeah. You know, that's one thing you just brought up that I think is so important for people to know. Just because you start going down a path learning about different things doesn't mean you're going to do it 24 seven and just keep on mm -hmm. it like a, you know, like a dog on a bone, always mm -hmm. keeping on it. It's going to be as you feel it, then you're going to be going back to it because there's things I've started and it's like, and then what I've learned from that, then I don't need to touch it again for a while. But then I know when I'm drawn back to it, then there's more information that I'm ready to learn at that moment. And sometimes it's understanding there's things we need to learn or pick up or those synchronicities that happen that like, oh, that's exactly what I needed. Now I can get back to this. So 
you know, don't push yourself and have fun with it and, and know that it's all a journey and it all, it all does fit together in crazy ways, but so much fun. And to know you don't have to, you know, just drive yourself into the ground learning this. And I've discovered is whatever you learn in the moment is what you're going to need for the next moment. And that's going to be different for everyone out there. And to know that you're not the same as everyone else. So quit trying (laughs) and start having fun with who you are. (laughs) All good points. And so I am so excited. And do you have anybody, anyone else want to talk quickly before? Okay. I think, well, you know, uh, just rounding off, I just want to say that, um, you know, we're all different, as you said, and, you know, uh, we're different for a reason, you know, when it comes to the universe, they have you a certain way to fit into it, you know, so for the love of God, you know, be your, yourself or yourselves, um, you know, when it comes to reading the chart, as I said before, how I see it and how Liz and Anita see it, it's just different, you know, even though we see the same thing, how our minds work, our knowledge, our histories, our experiences, uh, and so on, uh, is, is, is vast and, and matchless. And um, also, uh, the, 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 how we work with spirit or how we work with our intuition is, is unique. And, you know, I encourage people not to be a clone of anyone else, not to, uh, because, you know, there's already someone else out there uh, like that. And uh, also, uh, I would also encourage people um, not to do the same exact work as well. It's already being done, you know, break new uh, ground. But uh, when it comes to the universe, um, yes, be yourselves. And I think that will always, always, always be enough. I love that. That is so very true. Everyone should be their own unique self. That's so important because I think so many times we're kind of pigeonholed like, oh, you got to be like this group or be like this person or you need to fit in here. And really, you shouldn't be fitting in anywhere. You should really be fitting in uh, for you. Just whatever makes your own skin feel comfortable and do it that way. And I also want to bring up a little bit is for those of you who are interested in keeping up to date on some of the astrological things and that going on, make sure to check out Anita McMillan's, um, her Facebook and are you on Instagram? I can't remember now. Or yeah, Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, you are. I'm like, oh yeah, I was trying to look at my notes. So make sure to check out her, follow her on there and you're going to see updates on astrological updates and it's, and she's got a lot of great uh, tidbits on her information. So make sure to check that out. And I got to say, I am so excited to be here today with all of you and the information shared. And uh, I can't wait for you to check out more information on all of them. And remember, check out, and I will have links down below. So Anita McMillan, uh, Elizabeth Robido. John Baisley. And if, and if, if you can't reach someone, contact one of the other ones, they'll get you in contact with who you need to find. And make sure to check out their information, everything they have coming up, check out their websites, um, the ones who have them, right, John? Right. <laughs> no pressure. Coming soon. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think what you have to offer is so very important to the world. And I think for people to in, in invite that own curiosity in themselves is so important going forward. So I think all of you are so important and so needed out there in the world. And I am so excited and honored to have all of you here. And I just wanted to thank all of you once again. And thank you all for sharing your information and sharing everything with everyone here. And I want to also let everybody know to make sure to watch the ne- next episode of Edge Talk Radio. And that will be Eilina the Star Traveler on Tuesday, March 21st. And that is going to be at 7 p.m. Actually, I think I missed one in there. Actually, I did miss one (laughs) because that's the second one after this. But the one after this, uh, we are also going to be talking with Eilina and she is going to be talking about extraterrestrial contact, what it's like, what they're like, what happens during abductions, what you can learn from them and exploring the EL, Amadron, 
uh, Palladian, hybrid, and other types of ETs, and what roles do psychic abilities and remote feeling and hypnosis have in connection? You can check out more on her on Seeking the Truth at Stargate, Stargate Traveler, Star Traveler. Dot com. And I also, there's going to be one more coming in, uh, coming up after her and I, or just before, I also going to have Paul Smith, who was part of the remote viewing um, program with the Stargate program with, uh, it's all about the CIA, the psychic spies, everything they use during the earlier times. He was one of the five original people in the Stargate program. I will be interviewing him. His interview is going to be coming up and we are going to be covering a lot of information. I'm going to warn everybody now that will be a longer video because we covered a lot of information in the interview and make sure to check out more on Paul Smith, work for the remote viewing. He has remote viewing, rvis.com, remote viewing instructional services out of Cedar City, Utah. And if you want to work directly with him, I personally have. He is absolutely amazing. So uh, down to earth. If you're looking yeah. for down to earth, open and check out his rvis.com website. There's so much more information and any of his classes he does that he does in person are smaller, usually two to four people. So you really get the one-on-one -on -one time, but be ready to work because you are immersed in it the whole week. And it is, but I've got to say, so worth it. So make sure to check out some of these upcoming episodes. And I'm, and there's, there's so much more coming up and I've been so excited and I've been so honored to be part of this journey. So with that, I hope all of you make sure to check out elizabethrobido.com, anitamcmillan.com. Also check out Heart Songs, the Heart Song Center. Did I get that right, Elizabeth? Heart Song Center. You did, yeah, Heart Song Healing, yeah. Heart Song Healing, check out that. And then uh, John will be working his way in there. So make sure if you need to have any questions about anything with John, make sure to contact Elizabeth or Anita and they will get you in contact with them. And with that, I just want to thank all of you for being here and such a great day. And thank you so much for all you have to offer. Thank you. Oh, thank oh, you. Angel. Oh, it's a pleasure being here and uh, grateful for the opportunity. Yeah. Awesome. And thank all of you for listening out there. And I can't wait for you to come by and listen next time. Have an amazing day.